Hi, welcome to this channel on Magnetic Energy Technology Principles Applications. This is the Magnetic Energy Community Part 2 video and there's some fairly significant things that I've got to cover I think in this video. And the first thing is, so in the Magnetic Energy Community, everyone essentially has everything they need. You end the scarcity is end, there is no uh, <laughs> there's no scarcity. <laughs> is that a good way to say that? End of scarcity in the magnetic energy community of essentially everything. And so when you get into the formulation, reformulation, deformulation of matter with magnetic technology, you can essentially um, generate or replicate whatever you need. And so, so this gets kind of interesting because even though you could have everyone living there for free and even though everyone has everything they want and they take for granted the value of everything in the community at some point because it doesn't really have any value once it once there's there's no scarcity involved things kind of lose their value but before that happens if you have communities and the rest of the world is still trying to function in the same old paradigm of e economics everything in the magnetic energy community becomes very valuable. So for example, like if you have a magnetic energy house or a greenhouse or these things that have been developed with magnetic technology and they are essentially electricity free, they're off grid, they're self-sustaining, they have these incredible magnetic resonance energies throughout them and stuff. I mean, the house itself is worth a billion dollars. I mean, a billion dollars. It could be whatever price tag you put on it. Same with the greenhouse. Um, the vehicles that people would use would all be magnetic energy. They would be run on magnetic energy, so there'd be no pollution. There'd be no fuel required. So everything has this tremendous amount of value, even though the people in the community haven't really necessarily paid for anything because everything's basically free at that point because you can just replicate whatever you need. Now, the community itself could have export products. So the communities could literally export either conventional products that are already sold, or if they don't want to disrupt any markets, they could export completely new products that aren't even on the market at this point. And so, and they would literally just be replicating products or generating products out of etheric magnetic energy and then exporting those products and they could make as much money as they really want. But the interesting thing is they don't really need that money. So you kind of get into this weird dynamic of what's happening with these communities while we're in transition and moving away from it. Now, magnetic energy is really like almost like science fiction technology for what, from what we are used to as a society at large. And yes, granted, multiple inventors and including the people that we worked with and including our own technology has been proven. It's been proven and scientists have analyzed it. People have seen it. Governments have stolen it and all that other stuff. And that's fine. But the thing is, until it's proven again, it looks like science fiction. And so, and that's okay. And I think that's a great, you know, it is what it is for now. But when you have this type of technology, you can have, for example, everything you need to start a magnetic energy community contained in a small suitcase. And that sounds crazy, but the thing is, and then you can replicate those suitcases for free. So you could, I mean, you could literally start 10,000 magnetic energy communities all at once around the world. And every one of those communities is also, they have the technology to spawn off other communities to basically develop, create, grow other communities um, instantly. Like, and this, the community itself with the magnetic energy technology can be basically assembled and put together instantly, the, the infrastructure. And so it's, it's really kind of crazy how, when you think about how fast that could happen, and if all of those communities have basically a net surplus of whatever they need, because they don't really have any scarcity in those communities and they can start exporting their products, you can kind of see how quickly this could transform the world. 
And because I mean, the first thing when you talk, whenever there's, you know, talk about new communities, it's like, well, what's the price tag to live there? How much is it going to cost me? And there's, there's groups that have tried to say, well, you know, if you get this much money or you'll second mortgage your house and all this, but the magnetic energy technology isn't like that because it really is the end of scarcity on every level. And so it allows people to live there essentially for free and have everything they need and then much more. Now, so you kind of get how that could really move quite quickly once it starts happening. But I got to talk about some of the infrastructure like that happens with the community. So right now, and especially like in the States, we're so used to having roads and sidewalks everywhere. But the magnetic energy community isn't really like that. <laughs> Where we're going, we won't need roads. So we don't really need roads in this community. And we especially we don't want roads and sidewalks that don't um, that don't enhance the, the magnetic resonance and the vibration of the area and the community. Okay, so even if we have like pathways and you can have gorgeous pathways, those pathways have to be, they should be constructed in such a way that the materials of the pathway, like the stone, the rock, the metals involved in that, the amalgams, amalgamations of those are developed with magnetic technology and they resonate similar to like granite or to like limestone to things that we can that will help energy flow better. So like if someone's walking, for example, on bare feet on those, those charge that, that offers them tremendous flow of energy through their body, tremendous grounding, tremendous healing of their body. So your entire environment is essentially designed for optimal health and optimal ascension, not only physically, but in your consciousness. So the, so what we want to do is we want all the pathways or walkways or they don't, you don't really need streets, but at this point, but let's just say, for example, pathways, we want those to have to think ahead so that we have the ability to resonate those pathways to provide anti-gravitic pathways when we want to, or if we don't want to, and to have anti-gravitic pathways of any degree. So that may be, optimal, for example, for transportation of things or for even for recreation or for moving or just for regular things, but to have the ability to resonate those pathways at whatever frequencies and resonances, magnetic resonances that we want. So we want them like pre-developed in that in mind. And we don't really have a limitation on materials. Like someone's going to go, well, how can you afford miles of granite, you know, walkways? That's ridiculous. But see, we're working from a different model. So when we're replicating this technology, or we're replicating the ingredients for those, and we're developing those pathways with magnetic technology, we don't really care about the budget. The streets of gold, right? So I mean, we've got anything that we want, we can essentially keep that making that for the optimal environment that we want it to be. Now, of course, as the technology progresses, anti-gravity kind of becomes, you know, commonplace throughout the community. So all the transportation and whatever it is, whether it's just individual transportation or actual vehicles, they all become anti-gravitic. But, but before then, though, what we really at least want to do is have them driven with magnetic energy units and motors that don't produce any pollution. And so really, ideally, every one that wants a vehicle, if you will, that's, that's in the community has a magnetic energy driven vehicle. So if they want to leave the community and go anywhere else, that's fine. But if they want to get around the community, they could either have magnetic energy driven scooters or whatever it is that then are powered with magnetic technology and there's no, no carbon emissions, there's no batteries. There's no, no need to charge anything. It's just all based on magnetic technology. Now, that brings me up to the next point is that this is a very important point is these, these communities should be, and they, they really must be, chemical free. So anything, I'm talking about like herbicides, pesticides, anything that would control weeds and grass areas, all of that, it's got to all be done chemical free. So it's done with magnetic resonance technology. Um, cleaners and houses, household cleaners, all of that, zero chemicals, zero harsh chemicals, zero toxic chemicals. 
So if you want to have, you know, you don't really technically need any chemicals, but if someone wanted some sort of cleaning, if they just want to be able to clean, then all that obviously should be natural. But with magnetic resonance technology, your house is always going to be as clean as you want it to be. I mean, it could literally be a clean room environment if you want it that clean at all times. But, you know, some people may not really want that and they, they have the freedom to do that, but we want to keep them free of chemicals. And it's so important because people in our society, especially in the States, we live in incredibly toxic environments. I mean, the, the toxicity inside of our homes and our workplaces with the glues and the chemicals and the paints and everything, it's super toxic. And over time, that's obviously, that's very detrimental to the human body. And when we're talking about subtle energies, it gets really problematic. So we want an environment that's completely free of all unnatural toxins, all unnatural anything, any elements or chemicals or even plastics. There's no need for any of that in this environment. So that we have everything around us resonates with something that is consistent with our bodies, consistent with what we need to thrive, to have our energy get bigger and bigger, bolder, brighter, our auras brighter, we have higher vitality and all of these things. So that's, that's kind of, if you kind of think about where this community would be going and what would that entail? It's, it's it's kind of intense and it would be um, it would be pretty special to have those communities be popping up all around the planet and to really kind of change life on this planet so with that uh, I'll do another hopefully the next video will be on the magnetic energy healing centers because I really want to talk more in depth about that so I think it's really important and um, I think that's it for now and I will see you soon thank you